Hello everyone. This is a really exciting day because it marks the 30th anniversary since Roots and Shoots began in Tanzania in Dar es Salaam, 1991. I think most of you know that I'm Jane Goodall and most of you have heard of Roots and Shoots but maybe you don't all know how it began. It began in such a small way with 12 Tanzanian high school students and three were from Pakistan but they'd been born in Tanzania and they came from eight different high schools. I had just been round giving lectures and these were students who were particularly interested. So they came to me to talk on my veranda in Dar es Salaam overlooking the Indian Ocean and they were concerned about different things. Some of them worried about the illegal dynamiting, dynamite fishing that was destroying the coral reefs. And some were concerned about the cruel treatment of animals in the markets. And some were worried about the poaching in the national parks and why wasn't the government doing something about it? And why was the government allowing dams to be built and forests to be destroyed? And why was nobody doing more to help the street children who had no homes? And so I said, well, why don't you go back to your schools, get together friends of yours who feel the same. We'll have a meeting and discuss what we can do. And so that first Roots and Shoots meeting involved, I think, about 30 young people. And we discussed and I listened to all their, all their things that they were worried about. And that's when Roots and Shoots was born. And we decided from the beginning, the most important message, every single individual matters, makes a difference, and you have a choice as to what kind of difference you make. And remember, you make a difference every single day you live. And we decided that each group would choose, and they would choose themselves, uh, what projects they would do, but that they should choose one project to help people, one to help animals, one to help the environment, or all of those three mixed up in one big project. And so that's, that's how it all began. And I found over the years that in every group there are people passionate about animals, people passionate to help other people, and people passionate to help the environment. So that means every member of Roots and Shoots is passionate about something. And if they get to choose what they do, then they roll up their sleeves and take action. Roots and Shoots is all about taking action. So why is it called Roots and Shoots? Imagine your favorite big tree. When it began to grow from a little tiny seed, a small shoot appeared and little roots and it you could have picked it up then and it would have seemed so small so insignificant but you know there's a magic a life force in that seed so powerful that those little roots to reach the water can work through rocks and eventually push them aside and that little shoot to reach the sunlight can work through cracks in a brick wall <clears throat> and eventually knock it down so we see the rocks and the walls as all the problems that we humans have inflicted on this poor old planet, environmental and social. And so it's hope. Hundreds and thousands of young people around the world can truly make a difference when they work to make the world a better place. The first project we did in Dar es Salaam was those 12 students and a few of their friends did a clean up on the beach. There wasn't quite as much plastic in those days, quite a lot less actually, but still there was a lot of trash. People used to go and have picnics. And everybody laughed at them. Why are you doing this for nothing? You only work for your parents for nothing because you have to. Volunteerism was begun by Roots and Shoots in Tanzania 30 years ago. It's common now all over the country. So other projects that were done right at the beginning, visiting the market and persuading the sellers of livestock to give their animals shade from the hot sun and some water 
and some food, and to stop carrying chickens to market with their legs tied together on long poles as they bicycled along. And you know what it's like when you're upside down and the chickens were trying to get their heads up but they hadn't the strength. So we stopped that as well. And some of them went and helped in an orphanage, helping the street children to have food and somewhere to, to sleep. So now, as we celebrate 30 years later from that little beginning, wow, how has Roots and Shoots grown? We now have members of all ages, kindergarten, even preschool, university students, everything in between. And <clears throat> we've also got some adults. So we have Roots and Shoots in some prisons. We have Roots and Shoots in the senior citizen um, complexes and we have roots and shoots in some corporate staff. The members of the staff form a roots and shoots group to try and improve the behavior of the company. And <clears throat> today I just celebrated the founding, the first official launch of roots and shoots in Turkey. I think that makes the 67th group, something like that anyway. It's growing all the time. And anyone can join. I mean, we had one group that was just two brothers and they borrowed somebody's donkey and they attached a mower and they mowed people's lawns and they got money from mowing the lawn that they could donate to a good cause. They donated it to, to Jane Goodall Institute and also they collected the <coughs> donkey droppings and sold them uh, to people to manure their gardens, to fertilize their gardens. And we had another group, uh, which was a grandmother and her <coughs> total of eight grandchildren. So anybody can start a group, it doesn't cost you anything. We like you to join because then we can share what you do with the rest of the Roots and Shoots family around the world. It's important, we believe, to try and bring young people from different cult countries and cultures together. And we manage to do that mostly virtually, but sometimes the older students get together face to face. And, <clears throat> and this means the young people <clears throat> sorry, are learning that the, far more important than the color of your skin or your culture or your religion is the fact that we're all human beings. We're all part of one human family. That's very important today as we fight racism and discrimination. In some countries there are youth leadership councils in Tanzania. We have volunteers who go around and start Roots and Shoots in other schools and spread the Roots and Shoots message and encourage action. And what's the goal of Roots and Shoots? Well, ultimately, it's to have a critical mass of young people who grow up with the right values, who understand, yes, we need money to live, but when we start living for money, things start to go wrong. And there's this crazy notion we can have unlimited economic development on a planet with finite natural resources and a growing human population. Doesn't make sense, does it? So we haven't to carry on with business as usual. We need a new relationship with the natural world. And what's one really, really good a result of Roots and Shoots is that because it began way back in 91, many of our original members are now out in the big wide world and they're teachers and parents, they're working in offices and some of them are in critical decision-making situations in government and in CEOs of big corporations. So gradually the Roots and Shoots philosophy of respect for all living things is spreading and growing. And as I've said, we sure need it now. There's definitely more awareness around the world of what we're doing to the planet. So why aren't more people taking action, grown-up people? It's because 
they feel helpless and hopeless. And so when they feel helpless and hopeless, they fall into apathy and do nothing. And that's a disaster. If you don't have hope, then you do nothing. If you don't hope that your actions will make a difference, why bother to do them? So giving hope is desperately important and that's what Roots and Shoots does, certainly does it for me as I travel around, well I used to travel around the world, now I do it by Zoom, but everywhere I hear stories of what you young people are actually doing here and now to make the world different. It's not just what you can do when you grow up, it's what you're doing now. You truly are making a difference. And in some places, Roots and Shoots groups are changing attitudes. That's not an easy thing to do. Far more people in China now care about animals and understand that they have feelings. And that's true just about everywhere. People used to think animals were just things with no feelings and that they couldn't feel pain. Now people are beginning to understand that they do. And one woman in China told me that before her daughter joined Roots and Shoots and she got to understand about it, she used to just shop and just never think about what she was buying. But she said, now I think about what I buy. I choose products that haven't harmed the environment and products that weren't cruel to animals. And she's actively helping Roots and Shoots in Chengdu. This year is very special. So between now and February next year, we hope that Roots and Shoots groups between them around the world will accomplish 30,000 ac actions to make the world a better place. 30,000, maybe more. But wouldn't it be nice if at least uh, 1,000 of those projects was helping animals, at least 1,000 was helping people, and at least 1,000 was helping the environment. Cleaning streams, removing trash, recycling, collecting cell phones so that they can be reused or the minerals within them can be reused. So many projects going on. You young people have so much imagination and everywhere you're making a difference. What difference will you make during this year? We shall want to know. I shall want to know by the end of this anniversary year what you've done to make a difference, you and your group. And I think I'm going to be really surprised and really happy when I hear the results next February. So when we end our meetings in Tanzania, I, I used to hear them saying at the end when they'd gathered and shared projects and talked and laughed and had fun because Roots and Shoots is a lot about having fun, about playing sport together and having competitions, drawing and doing little plays. It, we need to have fun, especially when things are grim. The more fun we have and the more we can laugh, the better. And so at the end of one of these gatherings, when people were coming from around Dar es Salaam or around another city or from around the whole of Tanzania, the young people were saying, together we can. In other words, we can save the world. And I said, yes, we can. We know how to do it, but will we? Will we all get involved? Will we all do our bit? Will we remember that every single day we make a difference? So now, at the end of our gatherings, everybody says, together we can, together we will. And that's what I'm encouraging Roots and Shoots groups to do at the end of a meeting. And in fact, I encourage when I was speaking to large audiences, everybody to stand up and join me in saying, together we can save the world and together we will save the world. And that's the message I have for you now. So this special year, just prove how much difference Roots and Shoots groups and their friends can make. And let's all celebrate next year and be very, very proud. And thank you.
by oh I think I think many of you will wonder where Mr H is here's Mr H he's very happy on this anniversary as well and I know that many many Roots and Shoots groups know him have touched him and he's been on just about every video I've done for Roots and Shoots so it wouldn't be a proper celebration if Mr H wasn't here to say hello and I think also the chimpanzee greeting would be a good way to end. <laughs> My greetings to all of you all around the world until we meet again. Bye. Good luck. <laughs>